This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Asia we're talking about here on a given Tuesday. And today we're going to talk about the 2020 Summer Tokyo Olympics coming soon with Russell Hanma. He is the U.S. Senior Official for APEC Hawaii. Welcome to the show, Russell. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jay, for uh, uh, inviting me again. And I know this is a good subject for me. Myself being born and raised in uh, Tokyo, Japan in uh, 1959. And I remember in 1964. Yeah, Konnichiwa. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well. Yoko so. <laughs> 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 but anyways, uh, I wanted to uh, let you know in 1964 when they had the Tokyo Olympics, uh, I was a kindergarten, and uh, I remember my mother took me to the Olympics, uh, seeing the marathon race. So we're all standing by the uh, Koshu Kaido. That's a it's a it's a long strip uh, uh, national freeway that goes. You remember through. this at the age yes. of six, uh, five years five, old, six sorry. years old, <laughs> and uh, we're you know actually it was located right by where the Ajimonoto uh, Stadium is the right spice now. Spice Company. Yes, and uh, before, prior to that, before Ajinomoto Stadium was built, uh, it used to be a U.S. Uh, military housing under the U.S. Air Force, and it used to be called Kantomura, uh -huh. and we had like elementary school, like Chofu Elementary School, Middle School, and Chofu High School, and I my, myself went to the uh, kindergarten and elementary school, all the way up to middle school until Chofu High School closed. And well, we all Japan went to in 1964 was really different than it is today. Japan was, you know, that was less than 20 years after the end of World War II. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was still a period of recovery. It was still a period of significant American presence in Japan, more than now. It was a period of um, growth. And uh, the 1964 Olympics was very important for all of that, wasn't it? Oh, definitely. If you look at their national pride, and I think, you know, after the World War II in 19 from 45 to all the way to in the 50s, and when it came to the 60s, they'd be more stabilized, and people had more of a, uh, the Japanese citizen in general are having more of a national pride, and their companies, you know, automobile industry is starting to pick up, like their Toyota, Honda, Nissan, Mazda, Subaru, yeah. and their electronic firms from Mitsubishi, Sony to uh, Matsushita, National Panasonic yeah. to Sharp to all these different. They were just starting. Really. Yeah, a they're lot all of them just starting, starting exporting and they're doing the manufacturing. They didn't so even have the Walkman yet. Exactly. At that time. Yeah, right. The transistor radio, that's all. Yeah. And uh, in, in yen was 360 yen to a dollar, the currency exchange rate between dollar and uh, yen. And back then, uh, oh, for the good old days. Yeah, and they're building their infrastructure for transportation. Their uh, construction industry was starting to boom because they came up, even with the railroad industry. With uh, they're just coming up with their bullet train, their high speed, the Shinkansen, in 1964. So uh, that, that that opened like two weeks prior to the Olympics. So they were kind of uh, showcasing their Japanese uh, bullet yeah. train and their so technology. So it was very important to showcase their products, to showcase their progress to the world. Um, you know, who made that happen? How, how, did, how did the Olympics get set in Tokyo in 1964? I think probably there is a committee, uh, there's an international uh, uh, Olympic committee that votes on it. And uh, I, I believe uh, Tokyo was one of them. Uh, like in 2020, we, uh, the Olympic Committee uh, bid in 2013, and it was between Madrid, Spain, and Turkey, uh, and Japan was competing. And they decided unanimously, there's 100 members in the uh, International Olympic Committee, they all have to vote. And they said that Tokyo is more stable economically because Turkey, there was because of the problem with uh, oh, the terrorist sure. group yeah, and the ISIS yeah, yeah. and all that. And yeah. in Spain at that time, they had problems with the European Union and the austerity program. So they weren't uh, financially uh, able to, you know, all sponsor true. all that. And Japan, I think what they did was, uh, I remember when the, the Brazil Olympic uh, uh, two years ago, in, uh, in 2016, uh, a year ago, last summer, I believe, uh, and that's when Shinzo Abe, the prime minister, went there 
and he was showcasing that uh, the Mario and how they wanted to transform the torch. And, and myself, you know, we, we were, uh, we had a project here in Hawaii. We were going to work with the Tokyo Olympic Committee and our pr uh, previous governor as well. And I guess we'll, our governor, David Egan, went there with the Hawaii Tourism Authority. There was a dialogue and discussion saying that Hawaii can host the, uh, the baton of, uh, from going from Brazil to Tokyo in a Rio Janeiro. And uh, I think as we set up like all the Taiko group and we had like Kenny Endo and we <laughs> had the from Kenny Endo. <laughs> and we had like all the Taiko groups Serious of Hawaii to set it up in the Aloha <laughs> Stadium. They're gonna televise that. We're gonna congratulate Tokyo to oh, uh, passing yeah. on the baton Perfect. and Hawaii can be the Hawaii intermediator. Can be involved, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, but I guess the discussion didn't really have that dialogue because we're running out of time as well. But uh, I wanted to tie that in with the Pan Pacific uh, Parade or the uh, festival at the time being, so we can showcase how Asia Pacific is all about, and we cooperate. You know, we're working well, together. Well, let's take a look well. at that in the con. We're, we are, you know, going to discuss in detail in this uh, in this show uh, about the Tokyo Summer Olympics in 2020, which is only four years away. Tick, 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 tick. It's make that three years away. Did I get that right? It's three years away. It's around the corner. You could do the math on the number of days now. So <clears throat> what is Japan like these days? You know, how's the economy? Uh, has there been, uh, you know, a resurgence in the economy? How's the, uh, the bell curve on age, you know, be worried mm -hmm, about uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not enough young people and all that? How's that doing? And how is Japan's influence in all the, in all the things that we mm -hmm, have been mm -hmm, reading mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. in Asia, all these controversies and diplomatic maneuvers mm -hmm, by mm -hmm, this administration mm -hmm, and um, you know, China and North Korea and all that. Right, right. right. Um, well, I can, how, how, where does Japan fit right now in Asia? Well, I can talk to you from a macro and a micro aspect of yeah. economic wise and how they stand. But from a micro perspective, if you look into the social economic uh, norm of how the uh, how Japan is doing in terms of import export, in terms of their uh, gross domestic sales and uh, how they want to portray in terms of uh, assets and liability. I think they're doing quite well, you know, because if you look at all the assets they, they invest in uh, worldwide, uh, for example, uh, Japan's investing in the United States, like our savings bond, our treasury bills. They have roughly over uh, uh, the financial notes, including roughly over $1.3 trillion, besides personal businesses that they set up their factories and all the real estate holdings they have here. So they do that to all the countries from European countries. So, you know, in terms of uh, uh, allocating their assets uh, in terms of international currency uh, adjustment factor, mm -hmm. they're doing quite well. How and about, if you look at the domestic demand of their, I think uh, they're picking up their tourism as well. They're getting, gearing up for the 2020 and uh, they're promoting that uh, Omotenashi, which means welcoming the aloha of tourism, yokoso nihon ni kitekurasu, omotenashi kind of approach. So uh, they want to uh, welcome. Uh, so you've seen like tremendous amount of tourists coming from uh, China. You've seen a lot of them coming from Taiwan, Why? not from Why Vietnam. Because the shopping is great. Uh, like in Taiwan, if you look at, uh, talk to the uh, Chinese people from mainland China, they, they like their electronic products here. They like their uh, pharmaceutical medicine because of the medicine they buy in Japan through the drug stores in Japan, the yakkyoku. Uh, the medicine is more stronger. It's potent, so it works for their chemistry in their body. Yeah, yeah. And the ones over there, they might be generic and the ones in China. Right, so it's not a, so all the, <laughs> all the wealthy Chinese that come in, they're all at the drug stores and buying all the medicine and they like our uh, electronics. They like to go to uh, uh, the Electronic City and uh, uh, Akihabara, and you know they buy like toilets. Well, they Vic, like, Vic. yeah, they like you know that. Vic? Yeah, Vic. Vic, big electronics Exa store, Vic's old electronic store, exactly. electronic, exactly. like, like eight stories exactly. high of electronics. Exactly. It's a, like a heaven on earth exactly. place. Exactly. So you know, in terms of innovative new product, you know, consumer products, it's all out there. But but you know, <clears> think about <throat> Japan. My experience is limited, mm -hmm. but the thing about Japan is it's very easy to be there. It's clean, it's friendly, you can get what you want, uh, the food's good, mm -hmm. uh, transportation is good. 
whole thing is a cushy experience mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. in Japan. Isn't that true? To travel to Japan is a joy. Oh, yeah. They said it's probably the number one best place to travel right now, being safe. And uh, they accommodate you, your services. Uh, uh, you know, you, any little thing, they're kind of detailed. Like you go to buy in a department store in this gift shop, you buy a, like a hundred yen, a dollar item, they put a ribbon on it, a nice packaging, and just for, you know, sure, just sure. for even little things and uh, make you feel like, yeah, exactly. Make your customer feel good and all right, that. Right, right, yeah. and uh, I think they say it's the safest place to travel right now for Safety, uh, another yeah, big exactly. thing, yeah, yeah. Exactly so. so Japan really has, uh, you know, a tremendous cultural advantages for the traveler. And uh, so this makes it a, a worthy destination for the Olympics. Yeah, I think in, in terms not only for, you know, if you want to go there by 2020, it's fast, you know, it's good to have your reservation and, and they have the Airbnb as right well. Right now, it's three years. Yeah. yeah, so a lot of the uh, people are, you know, opening their homes now and they're doing the Airbnb and they want to welcome oh, the yeah. foreigners to go well, there. It's just like the U.S., huh? exactly. Airbnb is, uh, exactly. is really going places. Exactly, right? so I think... Uh, and it's cheaper than the hotels. You know, the, uh, the foreigners that travel, there they love it and uh, the, the food is great and uh, the thing when I like it when I go there you know I, being born and raised in Japan as we're in Tokyo you know I like to go to the back alley of the train station and go <laughs> in the hole in the one noodle yeah, place noodles and right exactly <laughs> like my gyoza and the uh, chahang and my yeah, ramen take there. Me with you <laughs> <laughs> and the water is tastes so good you know you drink their tap water it's clean, and uh, somehow every time I go there, I like to drink their tap water because it yeah, tastes yeah. so good. You, you, don't, you don't take the beer? I drink my beer. Okay, just checking. <laughs> <laughs> so we, 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 we have a special Olympics coming up, and this mm -hmm. is an Olympics that's going to be different. Um, and um, I guess people in Japan are excited about that, but I think a lot of other people outside of Japan are excited about having the, the next uh, Summer Olympics in, in, in Tokyo. What's going to be different about the competition and the sports involved? I think they, they came up with uh, roughly five new venues and new sports. Like I mentioned earlier, there's roughly uh, 12,000 athletes coming from 207 different countries. So far. So far. <laughs> and there's going to be 33 uh, different events. So roughly there's going to be over like 340 uh, sporting events and from 33 different categories. And they just included five different categories, which is uh, surfing, skateboard, surfing, baseball, Softball, Olympic and cliff sport. hanging. Like cliff uh, hanging in Olympic sport. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, for us, we can benefit tremendously in surfing and skateboard as well. We have our baseball here as well. But uh, uh, like surfing, I brought this up with uh, George Spaghetti of the Hawaii Tourism sure. Authority. And yeah. uh, he loved it because he'd been a former surfer. So I tell him, you guys <laughs> got to start promoting a lot of sports tourism with Asia Pacific. Maybe we can bring the Asian Pacific Games here. And now I want to bring, I'm kind of looking into the skateboarding. Uh -huh. And uh, we don't, because you know, there's a lot of kids here, the Keiki's one, and they have the dream of uh, want to be out there and, uh, you know, make it and hopefully get imagine, a gold medal. Imagine. Exactly. And Born and raised in Hawaii, go to the Olympics and do <laughs> surfing and <laughs> yes, skateboarding. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the thing, if we can kind of come up with a world class or identical skateboard ramp, or how they're going to do it in the competition in Tokyo. Uh, I'd like to get a, uh, you know, work with the U.S. Olympic Committee here or with the Tokyo Olympic Committee and see if we can get a plan or systematic of the blueprints and uh, maybe get some of the uh, privatization or even work with the city or the state. Uh, so how can we do that? What, what do you see? What do you envision for the connection between Hawaii, Hawaii sports, Hawaii athletes, and the Tokyo Olympics in 2020? What's, what's the best case analysis? What can we achieve? I think we can promote a lot of the uh, tourists or make it like a training ground. So it's not on, only for this one uh, time event. There's future Olympic events I, I mean, like year 2020. After that's going to be 2024, which is going to be in Paris, France. Uh -huh. And the thing about I mean, another four years after that is 2028, which is going to be in Los Angeles, California. So it's going to come. Yes, yeah, years and yeah years in we advance, are. Yes, yeah. and that's already been uh, the Olympic, uh, the International Olympic Committee decided already. So, so you're thinking voted if we can already. get our foot in the door for 2020 in Tokyo, that that will help us in 2024 and 2028 and so forth. So it's uh, a, an opportunity that will keep on giving back to Hawaii if we can capitalize on this opportunity exactly. now. Exactly. So we got to build on our, our sports tourism infrastructure here as well and uh, uh, make people more aware. 
And we want a lot of these young entrepreneurs to come out with ideas and businesses yeah. and, uh, so they can benefit as yeah, well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sports promoters as well. And we can host a lot of these international tournaments and contests here. Yeah, yeah sure, there's business there. Exactly. At, at HCA, at the convention exactly. center. And the fun it's thing, a whole new opportunity And for I've been, us. you know, going around uh, talking to a lot of these uh, sporting kind of uh, locomotion as well, but uh, some of these skateboard kind of uh, uh, stores that they sell in sure. Alamond. And I said, these guys national franchise. And say, they're willing to sponsor if we have yeah. something like this And that here. means sending you over? It yeah, means paying right, your yeah, expenses? Exactly. And yeah. promoting the uh, contest here and, uh, you know, putting some prize money on top. Okay, Russell, uh -huh. we're going to take a short break, and the reason is because I need, I need to practice my skateboarding just for a minute. <laughs> and when we come back, I'm going to ask you how I can get involved. Personally, uh, let's assume I, during this one-minute break I get to be good at the skateboard. How do I get involved? That's Russell Hanma. He is the U.S. senior official for APEC Hawaii, and he is involved in trying to connect up Hawaii with the Olympics in 2020 in Tokyo. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Ted Rawson here, folks, your host on Where the Drone Leads, our weekly show at noon on Thursdays here on Think Tech, where we talk about drones, anything you to do about drones, drones, remotely piloted aircraft, unmanned air crystals, whatever you want to call them, emerging into Hawaii's economy, educational framework, and our public life. We talk about things associated with the use, the misuse, uh, technology, engineering, legislation, with the local experts as well as people from across the country. Please join us noon on Thursdays and catch the latest on what's taking place in the world of drones that might affect you. Hello, I'm Helen Dora Hyden, the host of Voice of the Veteran, seen here live every Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. As a fellow veteran and veterans advocate with over 23 years experience serving veterans, active duty, and family members, I hope to educate everyone on benefits and accessibility services by inviting professionals in the field to appear on the show. In addition, I hope to plan on inviting guest veterans to talk about their concerns and possibly offer solutions. As we navigate and work together through issues, we can all benefit. Please join me every Thursday at 1 p.m. for the Voice of the Veteran. Aloha! What? We're, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. I just got back from my skateboarding experience out in the street there. I feel a lot better now. That's Russell Hanma. He is the U.S. Senior Olymp Official for APEC Hawaii, and he's involved in the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. If you want to join the conversation or ask Russell a question, if you also aspire to be in the Olympics in 2020, call our hotline, 808-374-2014. Okay, you can talk to Russell yourself. Okay, Russell, so <clears throat> let's assume that I have learned how to skateboard, fat chance. Let's assume I have learned how to skateboard, and I'm really good. How do I get involved in all this? What do I do to get on the pipeline to be in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics? Uh, you know, just like surfing, you got you got the professionals out there with uh, getting the uh, rankings, and you got to win so many tournaments. And uh, so, skateboard, there is uh, 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 like the Red Bull or some of these X Games that uh, Sponsor you. sponsors you. So if you if you put your in there, you're gonna have some kind of name name recognition, I'm sure. But yeah. but you can come as a dark horse as an amateur, yeah. you know. And based on if you learned how to do the proper moves and the ramp movements and everything, yeah. uh, my personal, you know, uh, I remember when like in the 1980s when I was in New York City, I prom I think I mentioned in the last time when I was doing the import export show that I promoted the Action East which is a skateboard and surfing uh, uh -huh. company. We were, it was a yeah, generic company. And done everything, Russell. And we made our video <laughs> promotion with the Thrasher magazine as well, so you can get your name recognition. And yeah, anybody can formulate that we, and come up with a brand name product or skateboard design and try to be an entrepreneur. So yourself, not only just as a skateboarder, uh, you, as a business people who's interested in the skateboard or uh, uh, surfing industry, can get involved okay, as well. Okay, but what about the trials? I mean, I can win local tournaments. I can, I can be known in a local community. That's not going to get me there. I got to go to the trials, right? I've, I have to compete. How does that work? Uh, actually, I don't have the details of exactly how the, the, the ranking work, but I'm sure uh, there's the, that must have the National Association for uh, 
professional so you go riders. you go on the Olympics uh, website which I'm sure exists today three years exactly out, yeah. that'd be interesting because you got to go through the tryouts and I would like to see the uh, what the evaluation how they gonna uh, uh, how they're gonna format the, uh, the skateboard uh, riders to make the team USA uh -huh. and just like a surfing too you got your ranking but I'm sure there's gonna be we have our John John Johnson yeah. you know yeah, and that's yeah, yeah. Who's, who's been winning some of the triple crown and you know that uh, I guess the point <coughs> is that people who might be inclined to to compete mm -hmm. in uh, the new ones okay let's see there's, there's uh, skateboarding uh, there's surfing there's baseball softball coming back yep. and cliff right. hanging you know I know a lot of people that hang cliffs all day long here on Bishop Street Sometimes in the media, they're mm -hmm. just hanging all the yeah. time by their fingernails. They're hanging, exactly. but I, I mean, real cliff hanging. You got you to you be trained for that, I yeah. think. And yeah. I think a lot of the Europeans are really good at oh, that sure already. Sure so the mountains, I'm yeah. sure they might be in the gold medal inten intentions there. So you've got to <coughs> find out what it takes to qualify. You've got to you got to practice. Uh, you've got to get involved in exactly. the trials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to go to the website and, and find the procedures so mm -hmm. you can get involved. And but it's not settled yet, right? It's not settled. In other words, you could do this right now, even if you haven't done it before. Right, because it is a new venue. It is a new sporting event. So it's just that uh, they're going to be looking for new players or new uh, uh, athletes who wants to be part of the Team USA. Yeah. So I think the, uh, in, in our case for Team USA, is we have our Olympic headquarters in the Colorado Springs uh, U.S. Olympic Committee, yeah. and they work closely with the International Olympic Committee. So yeah, that uh, might be where the trials exactly. are. Exactly, and that's yeah. where they're going to have. A, they must have an evaluation. They're going through the new venue, from how they're going to do the skateboarding, ramping, design. Yeah. Uh, I know there's got to be a standard design for a lot of but countries. But we we also have yeah. talent in say cycling. Mm -hmm. and track and field. Oh, yeah, there's an we MX could get bike. involved in the Olympics in many yeah, ways. Exactly. We can, there's an MX bicycle, you know, bike, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, canoeing as well, or sailing. So uh, have we been uh, active in the Olympics up to this point, Russell? Or is this a time when Hawaii and the athletes of Hawaii ought to consider joining up? Oh, yeah, you know, we have, we have tremendous uh, athletes that's representing, the, you know, Stanley Clay, we have, uh, the other, uh, you know, that soccer from, uh, you know, there's all these uh, athletes that come out made a team, of, especially in judo as well. But we should do more? Yeah, Miyazato from the, the volleyball, you know, so there's a lot of, you know, but I think it just to make it on the Olympic team is something right. very you special. Right, stop right there and it's yeah, world class. Exactly, and yeah. uh, for, especially for USA, because we're the dominance, you know, if you look at our medal counts, uh, we've always been in a, you know, number one slot there, so. Well, that, that actually goes to a point I wanted to raise with you is that the Olympics, and it has always been the case since the early 20th century, the Olympics are a method of diplomacy. They are a citizen diplomacy, athletic diplomacy, if you will, no exception now. So what, what effect do you think, this is a hard question, Russell, what effect does this have on, on sort of the world state of diplomacy or lack of diplomacy that we have going? How important is this, in your view, as a U.S. senior official for APEC, how important is this for American relations in not only Japan, but in Asia? Yeah, I think it is a, a non-political uh, amateur status before they start letting the professionals play, uh, like our basketball on our dream team. And it, but from the United States, we are real represented, and uh, we've got to show that uh, we're, you know, we are world leaders here that we're, you know, we have fair play. We have, we're keeping the, our rules and regulation. We're a law-abiding society and we're loving, caring. We take care of our friends and our neighbors. And I think, you know, in those kind of diplomacy, the sports and the sportsmanship plays a major role. Why don't you remind me of uh, Nixon and, was it Nixon and Ping Pong? <laughs> when he opened China, there was all this ping pong being played, and it was used as a diplomatic device, right? So the same with the Olympics, right? Right, right. You know, I myself was, a, you know, I was an athlete, so I know how it was. Oh, tell us uh, about it. You know, you know, I was a national champion in tennis in all in 1977, 78, uh, uh. and. Uh, uh, I was a national high school champion. I became the Far East champion, and uh, after that, uh, I was able to play semi-pro for a little bit, and uh, I got to meet uh, Bjorn Borg and Jimmy Connors. And oh, this is the I first time in 1978 names. when we, there was the first international uh, sporting event for tennis, and the Suntory was sponsoring sponsoring it. So they call it Suntory Cup, and we had a uh, four world-class players. It was Bjorn Borg, Jimmy Connors, 
Manuel Orantes from Spain, and Jeremy Vilas from Argentina. And they, were, uh, they play a four-man uh, round-robin tournament. And myself, you know, since I was a national champion in Japan as well, so I spoke, you know, English bilingual. They made me a translator and lines just so I was able to mingle with the players <laughs> and get their autograph. Great and, experience. And uh, <laughs> the thing about that, and then I could start saying, yeah, I'm a champion. I'm a tennis player myself. So they said, grab a racket. So I was able to play exhibition uh, set with uh, Bjorn Borg and Jimmy Connors. Oh, wow. And a young kid out of high yeah, school, won, you know. Yeah. And I was, they won, was yeah, yeah, but it was good. I was, at least like they gave me one game. <laughs> I was able to return a few of them. <laughs> you, you're still playing tennis? Well, I try to, but uh, I haven't been on the court for a while. Yeah, so. well, you have, you have three years here, you know, actually, yeah. to practice up. Maybe you can get in on this thing, too. Mm -hmm. You can do diplomacy on the tennis court in Tokyo in 2020. So my last question for you, Russell, is what can Hawaii do as a state, and as uh, you know, city, city and county jurisdictions, what can Hawaii do to, to make um, you know to make this really work for Hawaii? To make it a special opportunity to realize some special advantages in light of, of this Olympics coming on soon. I think in, you know, in terms of sports tourism, or not only that, but I know that state through the legislature, uh, I think it was last year, they tried to pass a bill on the Hawaii uh, uh, Sports uh, Commission. And basically, it's like a console, and they work with the Hawaii Tourism Authority with the industry here and try to market uh, sporting events. And one of them was like the Pro Bowl here, uh, the, uh, the Honolulu Marathon. We have our triathlon kind of uh, bill fishing. Uh, you know, there's all these uh, sporting things. Exactly. Yeah, because it's, uh, look at the weather. You know, we can do sports mm -hmm. uh, all year round. Uh, and that makes it, we have a big advantage, so we're going to take advantage of these. So the question I put to you is, you know, we have to spend some money for this? Should we spend some money? What kind of things should we do? What kind of infrastructure? You talked about creating venues mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of venues should we create? I think, you know, uh, in terms of not only the government getting involved, we want the private sector to go out there and try to support this as well with marketing, advertisement, the Hawaii Hotel Association, Hawaii Tourism Authority, the, uh, the Visitors Borough, uh, the sporting industry here as well with the retailers and the shopping malls. And we, I think in the people that love sports in general, uh, you know, we, uh, we all love sports. Sure we do. Uh, Hawaii is a very sports-loving place, mm -hmm. for sure. Look at the university. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, when, when do we start, uh, okay, and how do we start? What step do we put out first? Uh, what venue do we build first? What kind of money do we spend first? Can, should we wait until, uh, say, 2019? Or should we start? No, we gotta we gotta that. do it now. You know, I like to see a layout of the. the for example, surfing's already kind of in the works already because we we gotta pick and choose what kind of uh, sporting venue that's advantageous for Hawaii. As you know, the ocean marine sports is obviously sure, advantageous really. here, and uh, we wanna do the skating board uh, ramp kind of thing <laughs> where we can have a world class Olympic skating, so the people can come here and tr practice. And if we have an identical ramp design like they were going to use in, in Olympics in Tokyo. And all the, prior to that, they can have uh, pre-contests in, uh, in Hawaii and bring all these world-class skateboarders here. And we can groom the young kids here that they can watch and learn. So we can have an, a long-lasting effect here. We, have, we can have an ongoing benefit. If we set up right for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, then we can put ourselves on the map for later. We can become an athletic center in the Pacific from Asia, mm -hmm. from, from the mainland, from anywhere, and be, and be um, sort of a global uh, gathering place for th these kinds of sports, no? Exactly. So, you know, I would like to see hurry up and get the Aloha Stadium going again. I know that there's a new master plan coming up with the, and, uh, you know, and try to promote not only the stadium, because I know the stadium had that problem with the configuration, and we wanted to uh, compared to baseball, and I want to promote baseball here with Hawaii winter sports again. You know, baseball here, getting all the, uh, the rookies come here from, you know, not only from Major League Baseball, from, from Japan uh, League, but maybe include Taiwan Professional League, Korea Professional League, Japan as well, and South America, get the Mexican Leagues and some of the Latin American countries uh, players to come here and compete in this winter baseball league. Yeah, here, yeah. You know. Who's, who should be doing this? Uh, should the state, the city, um, should, you know, sports teams and, and sports organizations, do, who should do this? Who should put their step out first? 
Uh, you know, last time we had like uh, generosity from Wayne Kiritsu, uh, who was a you know business uh, sure. uh, developer and a leader here. Wayne uh, Kiritsu, we, yeah, we and, know uh, that we name, had, yeah. and uh, our famous uh, legendary uh, Len Sakata, mm -hmm. who uh, you know he's been you know he's been uh, one of the founders for baseball, Major League Baseball, being a former uh, World Series uh, player with the New Orleans uh, Orioles there and with the as a uh, coach for the uh, San Francisco Giants in the, you know, uh, second uh, in the minor league. But that is so many. Exactly. It's the kids get the benefit and mm -hmm. the people around the kids and the families and the community. It's pride. It's stand up Hawaii. It's, um, it's, it's internationalism. It's globalism. Think Tech loves globalism. It's, it's, it's exposing these kids and these athletes to life in Japan, athletics on the global scale. What a fabulous experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Russell. I'm, I'm so glad you're going to be involved in this. Um, and I, I hope that everything goes well and you should come back and tell us from time to time how it's going because, we, as you said, we have to move on it now. That's Russell Hanna. He's uh, the U.S. senior official for APEC Hawaii. Um, and he is involved in the and cares deeply about the 2020 Olympics in Japan. I have only three more things to say to you, Russell. Okay. Um, the, the first is... Uh, um, the first is uh, 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 Ohio Gazimus. Okay. Good morning. Uh, oh, oh that's, no, that's wrong. Good morning. Uh, ko konnichiwa, is that? Uh, yeah, konnichiwa. Konnichiwa, means, uh, konnichiwa. Hello, in okay. general. And, uh, yeah, um, uh, and uh, konbanwa is konbanwa afternoon. Is afternoon, afternoon, is afternoon and, and thank you very much. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. I knew that one. And, yeah. and, and temporarily, sayonara. Uh, sayonara. <laughs> I'll see you again. Or <laughs>